What's up everybody? Keith Dykes here with WKD Construction and welcome to the channel. We are here at the Milton Farm Project and today we're going to get started on some wiring and some plumbing. I do not do my own wiring. Sometimes I do in small stuff, but usually on a large custom home, I have a subcontractor that comes in and does all of my wiring and then uh, we as myself me and my guys do the plumbing i don't usually sometimes sometimes i will but probably 95 percent of the time me uh, i do all of my plumbing in-house if you are just now joining us here at the wkd construction channel thank you very much and if you want to get caught up to where we are on the melton farm project i will put a link right here to part one uh, where we start digging footings on on this project as I said, I do not do my own wiring. I do have a sub, his name is Jay Routen. I really won't get into a whole lot of detail on the wiring, we'll just walk through. I'll just kind of tell you some stuff about that since that is not my profession. So, uh, but like I said, we'll just kind of walk through, show you what we do here and there, kind of, just, just kind of a generic overview of the electrical. As for the plumbing, We've, we probably won't show like all the uh, venting and stuff. Cause I'll, I'll previously on episode maybe two, I don't know, we had all of the plumbing in the slab since this is a slab house. So all of the main plumbing, the real hardcore plumbing is, is in the slab. So I can put a link and you can uh, check out that, that part. Uh, just kind of see, we didn't really go into detail on that either. Just kind of, just kind of showed you an, an overview, uh, but here we're just going to put, run some vents, get it ready to prep and uh, run through the sheathing. And then we will install a PEX, PEX water pipe with a manifold system. So I probably will go ahead and show you how to mount the water heater, uh, install the manifold seal system, and uh, just kind of go through all the components with that. But overall, drains, we'll just, we'll just kind of just hit and miss, just kind of go over a little bit. So let's get at it. Let's go. So once Jay gets all finished, he'll come back, get all these wires all nice and tight and zip tied and all that. Let's let's go holler at him. Let's go get him to talk. What are you doing? <laughs> this is this is Mr. Jay Routen. He has been well, he was my first electrical sub that I ever hired, and that was we tested. You know, how, you know when that was? A long time ago. Let's see. I got my contractor's license in 0, 06, so that was in 07. So that is what seven, 17 years, 16 years. Tag. He's old. <laughs> Uh, we'll get him to stop for a second and we'll just ask him a few questions and then let him get back to it. All right, come here. Like I said, this is Jay Route and he's been working, work, we've been working together for 17, roughly 17 years. Uh, so I know a lot about you, but I don't guess I really asked, how did you get started to be an electrician? I worked with a contractor in the mid 90s. Um, and we did everything from start to finish, from the plumbing to the wiring, everything. The only thing we didn't do is lay the bricks on the exterior. So that's basically how I got started. I thought you worked with your dad. And after that, uh, when my dad retired from the military, he asked me if I'd come help him. He was an electrician previously, an electrician in the military oh, okay. on helicopters. But he, he liked to do small jobs, service calls, you know, little piddly stuff. and. I started taking new constructions and he didn't want to do it, so I just went out on my own. And so I learned a lot from the first contractor I worked with and from my dad, both. Those were both in, in the 90s. Okay, cool. Uh, Mr. J, he, right now he works solo. Solo, you can't see him, you know what I mean? He works by himself. So he was talking the other day and I was like, Jay, you need a helper, you need another helper. And he was like, nobody wants to learn anything. <laughs> they want to get paid but they don't want to learn anything. Yeah. You know, the last two helpers I had lasted five years apiece, and the last one couldn't wire a three-way switch after five years. <laughs> and I just quit trying to teach them anything. 
just he was just my little gopher. And uh, one before that was the same way. So nobody wants to learn anything. They just want to get paid. So I just and, rather do it by myself. Yeah. And I can't keep eye on everybody and can't trust them to do things right. So I just do it by myself. That's right. Quality will go down the more people you get to work for you. But, uh, but we do, uh, in the trades, we definitely need youth. So any of y'all younger, younger folk that are maybe interested in getting into any of the trades, dude, do it. We need you. We, we, we're all getting old, uh, and we don't have those people to come up and uh, take our place. So very important. Uh, you don't have to go to college. You can go to trade, trade school or just start in the trades, start making money. And, uh, yep, that's it. Just, just dig in and, and let's get it. Because there's always going to be a market for somebody to fix your plumbing, your electric. Even if the economy goes south, yep. people won't won't build, but they'll have to fix what they've got. That's right. And so there's always going to be some, a market for the construction trade, whether it's remodeling somebody's bathroom, replacing a floor in somebody's kitchen, you know, changing yep. ceiling fans and adding electrical outlets, changing somebody's fuse box to a breaker box. There's always going to be work, so, yep. always. Somebody needs something done. All right, so thank you, Jay. I just wanted y'all to, to meet Jay, and uh, I just wanted to ask him a few questions that I, that I didn't know about. So I'll let him get back to work, and, and, and we'll get to uh, doing what we do. Thank you. Thank you. So Jay Routon, my electrician, is almost complete with all of the rough-in wiring, and we, uh, Brent and I and Steve, had started on running our venting for the plumbing to get it into the attic so we can get ready to go through uh, make the penetration through the roof but we will wait on that until uh, we get the standing seam metal we are going to install a standing seam metal so i want to make sure that i will hit right in the middle of the panel so we'll wait to do that penetration through the roof <laughs> once we once we put the roof on there so we'll just go through the wiring really quick in the garage I keep all of the receptacles up about three feet. I don't know, I just like it up a little higher that way if you're spraying water and stuff, you're not really gonna get onto the uh, receptacles at a 16 inch height like inside the house. Uh, stairs, we had to build a little set of stairs so Miss Susan can get up into the attic a lot safer and a lot easier than uh, fooling with a dang pull down staircase. But here's the attic storage. And then right here, the HVAC unit will be setting here. So we've got lights right there, receptacle, and then of course lights and smoke detector up into the uh, attic storage here. And we got the storm room, which he still has to do the wiring in there. We will put a couple of lights in our vent. We're gonna install some sort of vent to uh, an exhaust vent to either suck air in or push it out. I don't, I don't know exactly what we're gonna do. This will be a little mechanical room, uh, the water heater closet, I guess you could call it. We're going to do a tankless, so we'll mount the tankless right there, and a manifold system out of PEX. I really love the, the uh, PEX manifold system, so that is my main water line. That's my main uh, sleeve for my water line, so we'll come up manifold into the water heater. We'll have to run exhaust and fresh air for that. Like I said, we've got all our venting run up. And uh, I just kind of got it terminated right there for right now. And then we will, uh, like I said, find a place where I want to go out the roof. So Jay, me, me, Jay, and Miss Susan, we all come in here and we figure out, we kind of go through everything, make sure where we want three-way switches, where we want four-way switches, uh, and then any special any special electrical outlets that she needs such as like a a high high mounted receptacle for a TV here and there but biggest thing is where do you want your switches to turn on and off at uh, and like I said the three-way four-way that, that makes a big difference you don't want to have to go over here just to turn on your living room lights you can come over here turn them on go over there turn them on go over there you know what i mean it's or actually over there sorry so this is a four-way we can turn on the living room lights there there and there so 
just just little stuff like that to uh make everybody happy like down the road we don't want her to get in here and when she moves in go be like man i wish i had that had that uh i could turn that switch on so can lights everywhere ceiling fan living room ceiling fans in the, all the bedrooms can lights are very very good way to go pretty cost effective and uh right here i like these these are can fans they are an exhaust fan but they look exactly like a can can light that way when you're in you don't have that big bulky cover like on our the the uh regular exhaust fan all you see is the can light bulb and then exhaust it sucks up the air in through around the bulb and then out out and we will terminate it out outside into the soffit but this is the brand it's a brone they are pretty quiet 1.5 sound zones with the 70 cfm so they have pretty good pretty good suction and they're pretty quiet too we've got some can lighting on the porches and then we have two ceiling fans on the back porch and then just a run of can lights out there as well and if you want your uh have some christmas lights or some sort of lighting switched we put a couple adjustable boxes up there and those that receptacle and down at the end will be switched so miss susan can uh, turn her christmas lights on and not have to set a timer and all that crap i just purchased all of my permits for the electrical i got a rough in a service release and a final I got all those because once we get it roughed in, I know I want heat and I want some air conditioning. So I got a service release that just releases the power and you can have electricity inside the house, turn the air on and be comfortable while you're working. And of course the final, when once everything gets installed, then, then uh, they come in, make sure all the breakers correct and uh, go through everything. Make sure all your GFIs get flipped. If you got arc faults, if you got dual function, it's to, they get pretty intense on the inspection but uh, that's what the final is each of those inspections are uh, they're 35 dollars a piece is what i have to pay and then i think you pay a little service charge for for using a uh, i think i use a debit card so and then i bought a 200 amp underground uh, meter base and that was 110 dollars so that gets all of our electrical ready to go. Jay is just about finished up. He's got to just kind of strap everything, do a few staples here and there, and uh, we'll just about be ready for the rough in inspection and hopefully get some insulation going. Well, actually, actually we got to put the roof on first, and that's going to be here in a few days. And then once we get the roof on, then we can go ahead and insulate, get HVAC, and roll on. I don't know if I've shown y'all the stub out. Uh, detail I use on our plumbing on the PEX pipe so I've got a 2 by 4 right here and then a 90 on the back side with a, a, a clip on it that way because I like to use the uh, shark bite push on shut offs underneath the sink that way when you, you're gonna push them on you can push on it and the clip holds the pipe still you know it's not gonna come in or come out so that gives it support. And then I use the PEX stub outs just because a plumber friend of mine, uh, been a plumber for 30 years, he said he would advise to use uh, the PEX instead of the copper. I was using the copper and he said, man, I, if I was you, I'd probably start using uh, PEX just because in our area, the water is very hard. And when you get copper, it does not like it doesn't like copper so <laughs> so he advised to start using uh pick stub outs so that's what we that's what we've been doing and i've not had any issues with it as long as you get it in there uh, put a clip on it you're not going to have any problems at any time and of course it's not gonna it won't rot uh, due to a uh, the water so here is my little manifold system here in the little mechanical closet Tankless will go here. We got the gas there. We got electricity for uh, 
for the water heater and these are just stubbed out. This is the only copper. I do have these copper. I know I just said I don't use copper. I don't use copper when it's hidden, you can't get to it. This, you could very easily fix if something did happen. It's exposed, so you can get in there and fix it. When it's in the wall, you can't. It would be a big deal. So I do like the copper manifolds versus the plastic ones. I think they look better. Uh, and Because they, they, the plastic ones feel a little cheesy to me, so, so I use the copper ones. But this is her main water shut off. That way she can shut it off in the house or go outside. I got the main outside, right outside uh, the back wall, the garage there. And then of course, you know, everything is ready to go. So this system isn't a, uh, it does not go to every single appliance. It's kind of like a home run uh, system, manifold system. I run, like I got a three quarter cold that runs to the master because it's way at the other end and then course that bathroom is on one circuit you got the kitchen on one circuit laundry small bath outside uh, faucets and then the ice maker so it's kind of a home run system then we tee up in the attic where uh, where you can get to it later if if something did happen but been I've been using PEX for several years now maybe 10 15 10 12 years something like that and I've never had an issue and and I really love it. It's it, it's it's a lot faster. Uh, there's of course less fittings. You can bow the pipe how you want to. You can make it run using the little clips like what I got in in the attic. Uh, keep it nice and organized. And uh, yeah, it just it may it speeds up the process. And it's just a, it's just a lot lot easier to to work with in in my opinion. If you're needing to run a bunch of wires, a bunch of PEX water line, whatever whatever you need, and you need a hanger, I would use these all the time. This is just Schedule 40, this is three inch Schedule 40 pipe. I'm gonna use this as my hanger. I'll just take a drill, drill a hole in it, and then I can use a Craig screw or whatever, some type of screw, and screw into, into my uh, truss, rafter, ceiling joists, whatever you want. And uh, then you can just use this as a chase, and it looks good, stays, it, it, they work really well, and they're very cheap, because I got a bunch of, Usually on a house, you're gonna have a bunch of plumbing left over. So just rip, just cut them into about an inch and a half piece and you're ready to go. Easy as that. So I've got a mark. My Craig, oh. Just dropped it, my Craig screw. Now we've got a nice place. Oh, peekaboo! Now we've got a nice place, organized place to keep all of our PEX plumbing in in line and out of the way, nice and neat. All right, so we're in the closet, and we'll get we'll do that later. We're just kind of roughing it in right now, anyway. So we'll we'll make do with uh, preparations for whatever we put in the ceiling to make it look nice. You can see our chases <laughs> I'll let you fall over everything <laughs> and then no fittings the only fittings I'm gonna have are up out in the open I'm gonna try not to hide try not to hide any up in the ceiling I will have a couple for our stub outs but it'll just be a fitting here and up in the attic to access it if need be if you've watched any of my stuff uh, you may have seen where I've done a service loop for the uh, PEX water pipe. And I'll show you, show you, look at this right here. So if you haven't seen my video on the service loop for your uh, PEX water line, this is an out, outdoor, this is a freezes faucet and the uh, faucet of choice is by Aquor. These things, oh, these things are beautiful, man. I mean, you can put them 
anywhere and they don't look like a big old honking uh, phraseless faucet, you know, just a, a, a pet cock or whatever you want, a seal cock, whatever you want to call them, you know, the big old bulky things. These are very sleek, very good looking. I'll get it opened up here. So here's the cover, which is just gray, but I ordered a white one because we're going to have white board and bat siding. So this is a 10 inch, uh, 10 inch model. I mean, it's 10 inches from here to here. That way, this is in the wall cavity, keeping nice and warm during the winter time. And uh, this won't freeze and bust if you happen to leave uh, your water on. You know, I mean, if you got water, usually you don't isolate each each exterior valve. I do. Uh, a lot of people don't. That way, you have if you if it's just tied into your regular water system, you're going to have pressure on this all the time. So, if you had it in here and you did not have a freeze this faucet and you live in a freezing climate, it's going to freeze. But this is this is look at that. Push the valve in there, comes right on. So of course I've got the uh, PEX water line, which I can move. And then I've got a sleeve. This is an inch and a half pipe. I'm using a sleeve because we are using foam insulation. I'll put the sleeve in there and then I can install my freezes faucet. And I don't have to worry about foam getting around this pipe and uh, not being able to not being able to access it later, which is the whole the whole point of the service loop. So let's take the sleeve, install it, and it is pitched to match match the pitch of the faucet perfectly. I think it's like seven degrees. So we got it pitched, goes in there, get nice and flush. Now I can use my uh, comes with a PEX fitting. Now I can install my PEX fitting, put it on there, and then push it into the wall cavity. Of course, I'll have a block for the siding and everything, a, 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 a spigot block or whatever you want, J block. But I'll have a block here and uh, that'll mount super, super cleanly up against the siding. And later on, if, if something did happen, I can pull it out and uh, access the, uh, the the fitting and not have to tear into drywall and stuff. So Aquar comes with their uh, vacuum breaker valve. You got that. Basically just sticks in there. Plugs in, water shoots out of it. Take it off. There you go. Put this on your hose. You won't lose it. Beautiful. Less moving parts, all stainless steel construction. And uh, I will put a link and you can and buy these. These are these are awesome. These are my standard issue install for all the WKD construction, new custom homes. Beautiful, be beautiful spigot. So here is the cover. This is uh, powder coated stainless in uh, white to match your siding. That way it's really, really sleek looking. But you can see it's got a wedge on it. So once you mount this flat to the wall and you put your faucet, your faucet will be kicked up and it will, that way when you turn your water off, the uh, water will drain out the end of the faucet and not stay in the faucet and cause a uh, freezing or a water issue, you know, during the winter time. This is the V1 model actually, the one, that faucet is the V1, they make a V2 which has a built-in vacuum breaker. I didn't need the, I didn't want the vacuum breaker so I just got the V1. So let's go inside and I'll show you the workings of it, the uh, service loop. So here's the inside workings of it. Of course, I got my pipe. Comes down my PEX tubing. Got a little clamp there and a clamp here. So now, once this gets all sealed in there, I can grab my pipe, push it out, work on work on my fixture, and then when I get done, then I grab the pipe, push it back into the wall, and it will just grow into the wall. So well, that's it. That's a service loop. Uh, service loop 101. <laughs> but uh, basically all that it's for is you can service the faucet 
later on down the road if anything ever did happen without having a big ordeal. You simply remove the screws, pull out the faucet, fix it, push it back in, replace it, and do, do what you gotta do. So it just makes the future a lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot more cost effective. All right, everybody. <laughs> that was my video on our, just our simple walkthrough on the plumbing and electrical here at the Melton Farm Project. I hope you guys liked me interviewing uh, Mr. Jay Routon. That was pretty cool. Uh, I've really, I've never done that before, so that was kind of something new for me, and I'm sure it was new for Jay. He was kind of, I think he was a little nervous, but uh, he did really well, and uh, that was, it was pretty neat. So hopefully, maybe I'll kind of get into more of that, trying to get our subs, or my subs, and uh, trying to fill them out and, and talk to them a little more and uh, just 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 kind of get a little story of, of maybe why why they are doing what they're doing. Why, why did they get into the trades? And that kind of brings up the question of uh, why did I get into uh, the trades? Well, basically I had a, a stepbrother that was in construction and I worked with him during one summer uh, while I was still in high school. And then once I got out, I did a little, I did some tank lining for about six, eight months. Actually, I worked in a sawmill for two weeks and then I went to tank lining, which was spraying the interior of railroad tanks for eight months, somewhere right in there. And I was like, the hell with that. Went back to work for my stepbrother and I've been in construction ever since. So that I graduated in 94 and that's probably 95 when I started. So I've been in construction since 95. I've been on my own uh, since 1997 and I got my contractor's license in 06 and hadn't looked back son so come on back we'll get the next part of the Melton Farm project series and I believe we will probably start well I don't know we may we may start installing the uh, the meter base and the water line or we may start on the standing seam roof one one of the two i'm not for sure yet we'll see how it goes when i edit so once again i am keith dykes this was the electrical and plumbing walkthrough thanks for watching and yes sir got it coach <laughs>